Brave Co. is starting this Tuesday night. It's a men's only event. So ladies, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait till October uh, when Linda leads off her ladies uh, group. But we're going to start this Tuesday night. 6.30 if you want to hang out with the guys and uh, chat a little bit. 7 o'clock is actually when our meeting starts, and I'll be sending in another email for that. The other video is this Friday night. We're going to be going to Little Europe Campground. That's Betty Shelley's uh, family's campground or Betty Shelley's campground. And we're going to be having a <laughs> campfire there. Uh, Laura, did you want to come up and say anything about that? I think I better get you up here. Laura, Mercer, and Tim. And uh, Kevin and Andrea Winder are going to be the point people on that. So come on up. If you just pass her your mic there, Linda. I guess not. <laughs> Is it on? Okay. There we go. So, yeah, this Friday we'll be meeting at Betty's place. Um, Six o'clock will be 536 for dinner and stuff. We're going to have hot, we're going to roast hot dogs. We're going to have um, corn and we're going to do s'mores over the fire. Hot chocolate, you know, drinks like that, and just have a good time of fellowship and fun. So it would be great if you could sign up. The sign-up sheet is at the back. And for those who want, you can stay over Friday night. Betty has some really nice cabins there on the price. And there's a sign-up for that so that she knows just how many people are going to stay over. Okay? That's awesome. So seven, I think there's seven cabins. So if you're driving further than a few kilometers and you stay late because you get around the campfire and you're talking lots... Oh, bring chairs, too, if you need a chair. I guess there's a few picnic tables there, but in case there's masses, throw in a couple of chairs in your car. So that's this Friday night. We'll send out an email uh, this week that's got the directions how to get there, just in case uh, you're not sure. But a quick direction is go past Highway 11, go over 118, go over the overpass, keep going, and it's going to be on your left in a few kilometers. But anyway, Linda, what else did you have to say? Those are a couple announcements this week. Wednesday night, Bible school. Second week. Wow. Right? Yeah, that was good. We and we're continuing an awesome on in the glory time. school. We did we have an awesome, awesome time. time. We did have on an awesome Wednesday. Time. It's funny because they were doing the glory school down here um, for the other people that aren't in the Bible school. And you could hear them up there. And I'm sure they could hear us down here. So the glory of the Lord and the presence of God and the power of God and His goodness was being poured out on Wednesday night here in this house. So we're really excited for what God's doing. Amen? So I'm reading today from Psalm 89. It says, can you hear it? Heaven is filled with your praises, O Lord. All the holy ones are praising you for your miracles. Who are the holy ones? We are. The sons of God are all praising you for your mighty wonders. We could search the skies forever and never find one like you. All the mighty angels could not be compared to you. Wow. All the heavens and everything on earth belong to you. For you are the creator of all that is seen and unseen. The four corners of the earth were put in place by you. You made the majestic mountains. They are shouting their praises to your name. Isn't that amazing that the mountains are shouting their praises? How many here want to be like a mountain? Shouting the praises of God. Come on. Come on. If a mountain can cry out, I can cry out. Amen. Amen. Come on. Breathtaking and awesome is your power. Astounding and unbelievable is your might and strength when it goes on display. <laughs> your glorious throne rests a foundation of righteousness and just verdict. Grace and truth are the attendants who go before you. And listen to this. Oh Lord, how blessed are the people who experience the shouts of worship. Did you hear what I said? How many people here are blessed?
shout a shout of victory. I want to shout and tell the world, Jesus is alive and well. Oh, I want to be that burning one. I want to be that burning one in this region, God. I want to be that one that's on fire, God. Oh, you told us, God, that one was coming mightier. It would baptize us with the Holy Ghost in fire. 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 Wow. Wow. Thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of angels to the Lamb. All who've gone before us, all who will believe, sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all.
You know, if you're in the ocean, you've been treading water for hours, trying to keep yourself up, it does come a point where you just stop and let go. Like I said, I don't, I don't know if it's a great analogy, but there's, there's some of you in this room right now and you're like, what are we doing right now? Or why am I uncomfortable? Or when are we gonna go to the next song? Stop trying to prop yourself up. Stop, stop, stop treading water and just let go. That's just the best way right now that I can describe what we're doing. And those of you that have let go, you've seen you've entered into a whole other place. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for a sanctification in this room today. We thank you, God, that we don't gather around legalism, God, or do's and don'ts, but we gather around your presence. We gather around that open door that Jesus provided for us when the, the, the veil was torn open. Oh. Oh. So again, if you feel like you've been treading water all this week, try to keep your head up. This is a place you, you can sit down, you can lay down. You can run around. Just receive this morning. Receive his goodness. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Whatever you need this morning, that's what the good news is. Sozo means completeness.
somebody needs to hear this morning. I don't know who you are, but you're beautiful. You're beautiful. I break that lie off of you right now that when you look in the mirror, there's a voice that says contrary to that. I break that lie off of you. I break it in Jesus' name. Somebody else in this room today, there's a voice that says you're never really going to amount to anything, so you might as well just get used to having nothing. That's a lie. That's a lie. I break that lie off of you. You're not going to be that way forever. You might be in a difficult spot right now, but you're not going to be there for long because you're going to a place. You're getting revelation and understanding that you've been made in the image of God, that you have the ability with your tongue to speak for a better future. You have the ability to prophesy into reality that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I see it, so I'm going to do it this morning. But if there's something something in your life that's just really challenging, it might be a person, it might be a situation, it might be just the way you think about yourself or you feel. Take that thing, wherever it is, see it, and I want you this morning, by faith, hold it up before God. Just, you can physically do it. It's a, it's a prophetic act. You can literally just say, Lord, this, this thing that just, it's been pounding me, it's a Maybe it's a generational thing. Maybe it's a physical thing. Maybe it's a mental thing. Maybe it's all those things. Just hold it up to the Lord. Father, I want to do the great exchange today. I want to give you all my fears, all my insecurities, all my mis misappropriation of feelings and emotions. Maybe I've just been an emotional roller coaster. Maybe I've lived in trauma my whole life. God, I thank you. I give it to you today. Just lift it up. Lift it up. Give it to him. And after you've done that, however you do that, just receive from him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever form that is, whether it's peace in the mind, healing in the body, Relationships restored, marriages reconnected, a fire that's been kindled again.
Lord, speak to me that he wants to remove for some people the torment in your minds, the torment that when you have felt like you've had these thoughts and the enemy brings up your past, brings up your situations. It's in this case of joy. Where you can not just have an experience, but you can have the truth. You can have the truth that He loves you, that He doesn't reject you, He doesn't call you a bad person. So, Lord, I thank you, God, right now. For your sight, whoever this is, free. Whoever I'm talking to, you set them free from the Spirit. That says they're insignificant. That says they're worthless. Lord, I thank you for your glory, God. And your glory transforms us from glory to glory. And so, Lord, I thank you, God, that Lord, that you remove insignificance and you bring them significance, God. You bring them, God, to their destiny, God. I thank you right now. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, but Lord forgives you. He forgives you. He doesn't call you perverse. He forgives you. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Your love covers all. Just hear the Lord say, when the enemy's been over. 
here forgiving themselves of, of things that they've done and decisions that they've made in their lives that they've brought regret there's a freedom right now in Jesus name let go let go righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, 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 every day, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! How is that even possible? How can you dwell in the house of the Lord? How can surely goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life unless, unless you have learned something secretive? You know, it was a few years ago that I think it was... I think it was 8 o'clock in the morning and I got pulled over for a ride check. Not not 8 p.m., not 11 p.m., 8 or 8 in the morning. So why am I saying that? Because there's people that have learned to abide in a realm because they don't like reality. And unfortunately, it's a very destructive realm. I mean, it's alcohol is what I'm referring to. But they literally dwell in that realm. And they don't want to come out of that realm. But you and I have the ability to dwell in the realm of his presence. All the time. All the time. All the time. You're saying that's not possible. Yes, yes it is possible. That's what Jesus did, and that's why... So many of the Psalms, so many of Paul's exhortations to the church were, you know, Galatians. I don't know if we'll get there today or not, but it says, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? And actually one translation says, 
you idiots. Like you're, 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 if you don't understand what Jesus did for you, if you don't understand, you can dwell in the glory. Don't buy the lie. Buy truth and sell it not. It's not. Anyways, come on up, Kevin. Kevin's going to give the Lord's tithes and offerings message today. Let's try that one more time. Kevin's going to give the Lord's tithes and offerings message. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. If you want a wireless, you can use that one there. Thank you, Lord. I can't even unlock my phone. I still missed it. This is not good. I can't unlock my phone. I could do it from my heart, I could. But I want to read it from the Bible. Before AI gets to these. <laughs> Matthew 6, 25 to 34. You know, you, you, we don't have to switch gears. You can just sit here and soak. I'm going to read the word and you can just soak it in. God says, therefore, I say to you, this is actually Jesus saying it. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink. Or about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? You know, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature or one inch? So why do you worry about clothing? Why do you worry about money? Why do you worry about finances? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil, toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Do not worry, saying, the stock market has crashed. Do not worry, saying... Somebody might get voted into the United States presidency that we don't like. Somebody might get voted into Canada's prime ministership that we might not like. These are, th these are things that the Gentiles seek and concern themselves with. For your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. <coughs> but seek first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. All you have is today. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Where's, where's the kingdom of God? It's in you. The kingdom of God is here. And where's the glory? In you. So when we, when we seek first the kingdom of God, we are seeking the glory of God. Right? 
And when you put all things in order by honoring God with your wealth, when you, when you honor God with your wealth, that is one of, one of the biggest areas that, that, we concern, that, that is an issue to us, is, is what our finances are like. It's one of the biggest issues that causes divorce, is what are, what's happening with our finances. But if you, if you fail to put God first by honoring Him, you give place for the devil because you're stealing you're robbing from God what is already His. Matter of fact, matter of fact, when you confess Jesus Christ as Lord, He owns you because you have been bought with a price. Right? He owns you. He is Lord. You confess Him as Lord. He is Lord of your life. And you honor God. See, Satan, Satan is an accuser. That's what his name means, Satan, accuser. And he, uh, he stands before God, and he accuses you. So if you give place for the devil to give something to accuse you about, then you have... You have opened yourself up for him to come after you in terms of your, your finances or whatever it may be. So the word for today, the word that we've heard before is repent. Repent and turn from your ways of stealing from God and give. Return to him what is his and don't give place for the devil to come after you in your finances. Amen? I'm going to invite the uh, ushers to come and receive the offering. He is your Lord. He is your Lord and He is your Savior. So we're going to say our declaration this morning. Father. I'm sowing the seed of finances into the, your word says that you will supply all of my needs according to your riches in, by Christ Jesus. In, I know I find salvation, unity, wisdom, knowledge, revelation, healing, deliverance, supernatural abundance, prosperity, as I sow the seed to heaven, I release the Holy Spirit to use it where it is needed. And I look forward to my harvest of glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You all know the story of Zacchaeus, right? How many don't know the story of Zacchaeus? I mean, don't know the story of Zacchaeus. Okay. For you, Cameron, we're going to tell the story of Zacchaeus because he was a wee little man. Uh, we learned this in Sunday school. There was a song, actually, we sang Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. But he was a, he was a, he was a tax collector, and, and uh, what he did as a tax collector, he would, he would take extra that he would take more than what was he was supposed to collect for taxes. So he made himself rich um, by doing that. But when he met Jesus, and because he was a wee little man, he, and when Jesus was coming along, he climbed up a sycamore tree, and uh, he wanted to see Jesus. And Jesus stopped and called Zacchaeus down, and he said, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house for lunch. And so when, when Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, Zacchaeus recognized Jesus as Lord, and he repented of his actions. And what he did was he made everything right. He said, whoever I stole from, and he did it according to the Bible. He gave uh, four times. He returned four times what he took. I believe four or seven times what he took from those who he stole from. So he, he repented. And then he made right what he'd taken. Right? Amen. 
Come on up. It's in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I, it might be in all of them. I don't remember. Lord, we just, we just pray your blessing upon these offerings, and these gifts, these tithes, as we have returned to you what is yours, as we have given above and beyond. God, I pray that as it, it, it goes into the heavenlies, God, I pray that you will pour out blessings that we have never seen before or experienced. And God, I pray that even in this place, that you will just begin to throw gemstones from heaven just because you love your children. Amen? Amen. Wow. Praise God. Thanks, Kevin. wondered what I did with my Bible. Oh, there it is. All right. Uh, maybe I get some help, somebody to move this uh, whiteboard so everybody can see it. And then I need uh, our artist, our house artist to write this down for me. Whew. All right. The truths of God... The truths of God. Are hidden. For his children. Or you could put in brackets people. Because we're the people of God. We're the children of God. So we have the truths of God are hidden for his children, comma, not from them. Somebody might say, is there anything like that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. It says in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2, the glory of God is to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search it out. Another translation says, it is the glory of God to conceal a... Th oh, that's the exact same. Why would I read that? It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. And it is the glory of kings to investigate a matter. Another translation says... It is the glory of God to hide something and the glory of kings to discover something. So as a believer, you have been granted access to the spiritual realm, the kingdom of God. And really today is a bit of a, a, bit of a review but I think it's necessary because we're going to be launching home groups in the next few weeks. And once you start to operate out of the glory realm, that is where you see lives changed. When Jesus walked the earth, he did nothing except what he saw from his father. And I mean, the world is in crises right now. The people need ministry. Everywhere I go, I'm ministering to people. Everywhere. Right back at the beginning in Genesis, Adam and Eve were put in the garden to tend and keep it. The whole plan of God was to extend the borders of the, gar the garden to overtake the earth. Sometime before that, there were three archangels. There was Michael, Gabriel, and another one called Lucifer. Lucifer, pride entered Lucifer's heart. And he wanted to be like God. So it does say in the word of God that a third of the stars fell 
when Lucifer fell because God confronted Lucifer. The thing about Lucifer and Gabriel and Michael, archangels, high angels, the, the thing about them is they're created beings. God is not a created being. This is where it gets hard for the human mind. He always was. There's only one creator, God. So, to summarize or to water ski over a whole lot of church history or history going into the word of God, the devil was kicked out of the third heaven. And the Bible said he's actually coming to naught. So, he has already lost. He is being made to nothing. He's a defeated foe. He has power, okay, but he doesn't have authority. So why, why am I telling you all this? Well, our, as a church, our, our operating statement, our number one mission statement is on earth as it is in heaven. So when you are having your home group and teaching whatever lesson it is you're teaching, the goal of the home group is that that home group is displaying on earth as it is in heaven. That's the goal. It's not for you to get theologically perfect. It's not for you to rack up points for people to salva salvation things. It's not the goal for demons to be cast out. Though those things may happen, the goal is that you are to expand the borders of your home because your home, your life group that you're going to have or whatever title you want to put on it, your group study or your neighborhood gathering, loving on your neighbors, when people walk into your house, there's something different at your house because there's liberty in your house. Because in your house, the Spirit of the Lord is allowed to be Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is allowed to be Lord, there's liberty, there's freedom. I want you to turn with you, with me, in your Bibles. Oh, boy. <laughs> We're going to, Kevin kind of set me up here. Let's go over to, uh, hold on one second here. Oh boy. Now I know what you mean, Kevin. You couldn't unlock your phone. I can't see my iPad. Okay. Wow. Let's, let's start in Ephesians chapter 1. Let's start there. We'll just see. When you and I start to op operate out of the glory realm, everything changes. The way you go to work changes. The way you see your in-laws or your outlaws changes. The way, as Kevin already said, the way you view finances and the things of this world. In fact, when we were, uh, when we were making our declaration today, I actually looked at where it says, as I sow into the, the glory, I, I started in my mind to change the word. Instead of glory, I put as I sow into the world. Because I thought, how many people are living, giving into a worldly system all the time? And, and I watched, the, like in my mind, as we're reading it out, I'm meditating, saying, okay, if I'm a product of the world, if I'm under that spirit of mammon, I am going to sow into the world. Like, there, there's people today, and this is foolishness to them. Because their eyes have not been enlightened. It's concealed. And it's concealed. The glory realm is concealed, or as we read in Proverbs, it's hidden. And it's be, it's goes way back to the garden. It's because of the fall of man. You know, I love what Emma Stark says. She says, you know, the devil is an opportunist. 
The Bible tells us that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the earth looking for faith. Well, guess what? I think the enemies of God roam around the earth. The demonic realm roams around the earth, watches people like you and me, and looks for an opportunity to sow a seed to get you or I to bite a lie. So what we're after today is we're after the truth. We're after the revelation of God and what he's done for his church, for us. Linda laid it out so wonderfully last week using words that some people don't like. Ascension, ascending, going up into the third heaven. But let's just biblically this morning, let's look in our Bible, Ephesians chapter 1, just start and start reading our Bible. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Whose will was it? Man's will for Paul? It was God's will. To the saints who are in Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. That's us. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with a few spiritual blessings somewhere. Every spiritual blessing in the world. Doesn't say that. What does it say? Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Hold on, it gets better. This, we're just like, you can't skip over that. Well, you can. If you're going to search a matter out, you're, you're going to say to yourself, what is it that he's given me that's in the heavenly realms? And how do I get it? And how do I get there? And how do I see it? Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. We should be. Are we all? No. No, we're not having predestined us to adoption as his sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his, there's a big word there, of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. So Ephesians chapter four, uh, four I believe, I want to make sure I quote it right, says that you are saved by grace, Sorry, you're right, two. That's so why we, we make sure. I want to be very biblically accurate. <clears throat> Verse eight, for by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not of yourself, it's a gift of God, lest any man should boast. It's a gift. You and I were created to do good works. We've been saved not of our own merit. We didn't decide to follow Jesus, actually. He put a call out upon you and you accepted the gift. You grabbed the gift. But we don't stop there with grabbing salvation. Salvation is just like a doorway. Let's go back to Ephesians 1. In him we have redemption through his blood, verse 7, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches, and here it is again, the riches of his grace. And I love uh, a translation of grace is the power to do what truth demands. So, so grace is like a dunamis power. Grace is like dynamite that actually will give you the power to start to ascend. It will give you the power to have a new mindset. It will give you the power to have a whole new view. When grace is present in the room, demons flee because there's a power in the room. It's not a legalistic thing. It's a gift. You receive it. You flow in it. It takes faith to, to grab onto it. Which he made, it says in verse eight, to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mystery 
of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. So again, we see there's two well, there's three realms, but we can see that in the heavenly places, in the fullness of time, he's going to bring it all together. But right now, you and I have the ability to start to live out of the grace of God. Live out of that place that you can only go there's only a select few that can go. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus said, you know, what must I do? And, and Jesus said, you must be born again. And you know, the media has done such a great job in mocking what it is to be born again. When in reality, if you are truly born again, not born of the flesh, but if you are born again, born of the spirit, you start a journey learning all the rights, all the benefits of what it is to be a bona fide child of God. The mysteries of God are hidden. But it doesn't mean you can't access them. It's because they're, they're priceless. You cannot buy into the kingdom of God. Silver or gold, may it perish with you, the apostle said to the sorcerer. You can't buy this stuff. It's priceless. But when you get it, when, you, when the lights go on, when you, when you start to taste and see that the Lord is good, you'll sell everything. It's the pearl of great price. That's why churches are full of people that have a sad look on their face because they think it's so hard to serve Jesus in 2024. It is if you're operating out of the soul in, this, in the body. But if you operate out of the spirit, you can't wait to get together with, a, with your fellow believers because it's a big celebration. The angels gather when we gather like this because there's a celebration here. We are honoring what he did for us. Hebrews chapter 6, if you want to go there in your Bible, it says, but beloved, in verse 9, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9, but beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you, yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown towards his name, that, in, that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope to the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Faith is a substance. It literally is something that you grab onto and you pull it into the now. There, there is the great fight of faith. It's been made available to you, but there is an enemy that does not want you to live out on earth as it is in heaven. He wants you to live out on earth as it is on earth. That's why there's a battle. Is it a defeated foe? Yes. yes. Have you got the victory? Yes. But there's a whole bunch of wrong propaganda out there that continually is battling you, saying you're not good enough. You don't fit in. You won't amount to nothing. I can't get over lust. I can't get over poverty. I can't get over this. I can't. Those are lies. This is where Kevin set me up so well. 
I had no idea he was going to say it, but it says, this is one of my key verses, Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, okay? And now we know through study and we know through teaching that repentance is change your mind, but it's more than that. Because if I just declared to you today, you need to repent, you need to change your mind. If we analyze that, I'm actually, I'm actually giving the intellect power. You, you can't do that. That's why there's so many frustrated Christians. That's why there's so many people that call themselves a Christian, they hear a message, you need to repent. You do need to repent. You need to change your ways. You need to have a new view. But it's not an intellectual assent. That's why so many people struggle. It's like, we're going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Woohoo! And they're like, it's like, you got to wiggle your tongue, speak it out. And they're like, and they don't realize that there's a battle in their mind and there is so much pride in them. They will not speak the gibberish out of their mouth because their intellect for 30, 40, 20 years, 10 years, five years, however old old they've been, has been the boss. And in the company of one or two safe people, many people can't get over that hurdle. And they hear this message, repent, 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 make it right, make it. Why did Nicodemus, sorry, why did Zacchaeus, Wow, we got all these ESs. Kevin mentioned Zacchaeus. Why did he give, make it right, and four times more? Well, yes, he was fulfilling biblical ways to make it right, but what kind of an encounter did he have with Jesus? His spirit came alive. He had a new understanding. Pride is a sense of one's own proper dignity or value, self-respect. I have my pride, and the world exalts this. They say, I have my pride. I'm not going to sink to your standards. I look at it and say, you have your pride, and you won't ascend to his glory. And fear is involved there. It says in Psalm 19, verse 8, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It enlightens the eyes. Psalm 136 says, 138, verse 6 says, for though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar meaning those that have pride. See, pride is a dangerous thing. So if you've been taught your whole life, repent, repent for the kingdom's heaven. It's like I do go home. I keep saying, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not an intellectual repentance. Proverbs 3, 34, towards the scornful, he is scornful. But to the humble, he gives favor. Proverbs 29, 23, one's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Matthew 23, 12, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. It is not an intellectual ascent. You can't figure God out. Stop. Stop. He's God. Do a study on God. All-powerful, all-knowing, holy, dwells in unapproachable light. And you're there calculating your finance. Uh, If I give $500, God will give me back. Maybe not. Maybe not. 
Uh, if I go to church uh, X number of days, if I pray uh, 1.2 hours a day, I'll, I'll be in. Stop! When you come home, if you have a dog, the dog's running down the hall, the tongue out the side, can't wait to see you. He loves you with an unconditional love. I'm not sure about cats. Maybe cats do the same thing. I'm a dog person, but cats will, I don't know, rub your leg or whatever they do. But, like, that's a horrible analogy, but that should be our, like, when we think of the Lord, he has set you free. And if you don't think of the Lord that way, that means there has to be a shift in your mindset. We're going to get a little deeper. I'm trying to just lay a bit of a foundation. Luke chapter 1, verse 52. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of a humble estate. And then you guys know this one. It's been a buzzword around here. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's James 4, 6. I don't know about you but I need the power to do what truth demands. I need the power. Like, I need it. It's like, it's like I'm a junkie for the grace of God because you can't live without it. And do you know one of the access points for the grace? We did it already this morning. It's praise. I praise when I feel it. I praise when I don't. Those are the things that put the mental attempt to ascend down. We wage a warfare not with carnal weapons. Again, it's not a mental battle. Second Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians 12.2, I think Linda referred to it last week. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And what happened when Paul went up to the third heaven? He had been preaching an intellectual gospel. There's many people that cringe at the thought of evangelism. <gasps> I don't want to share my faith. I agree. If it's, a, if it's an intellectual battle, it, it's awful. It's like signing up for a call center and you just get rejected and rejected and rejected. Now, some people thrive on that. I do understand there are some personalities who are like, I don't care, man. I'll just keep calling it. They're usually sales type people. But most of us, we don't like evangelism because you haven't been operating out of the third heaven. But the first time that you... Quiet yourself, as Mark Verkler says, tune to flow, pull away, meditate on the word of God, a promise of God, and then suddenly you see a picture and the name Jason shows up, or the name Ted or Bill or Sandra or Sarah, and you see a name. And then you go out and you meet somebody just casually and you say, oh, hi, I'm just hanging out here today with some friends. And they say, oh, yeah, my name's Sarah or Jason or Tom. And the name. When that starts to happen to you, you've just revealed something. You've revealed, you've investigated that when you and I put the effort into repentance, because it's a continual thing. I was with Linda and Joel yesterday, and I don't even know how it came up. Something came up. I think, I think we were talking about a ministry or something, and... and Joel said, you know, there's been a lot of bad talk about this ministry and people should really make it right, whatever. And instantly I remembered a conversation I had with another minister and we had brought up that ministry. It was a worldwide ministry. Instantly in front of Linda and Joel, I just started to repent because I wanted to look good for them. No, because I wanted to cancel the opportunist Anything that he might have on me for speaking against a ministry. I went to the throne of grace where we were. We just stopped. And I just said, man, I got to make it right right now. God, I thank you that your mercy is new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lord, I repent right now. I change my mind. I bless that ministry. Forgive me. I'm guilty. May, it be, may the records be brought up where the accuser of the brethren has accused me I claim that I'm guilty, 
But your word says in Revelation that I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony, I plead the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every instance where I've spoken against any other ministry or any other of your creation, God. Forgive me and may I be acquitted in Jesus' name and the accuser silenced in Jesus' name. I declare that there's a restraining order put over the accuser in my life over that issue in Jesus' name. That is me recognizing there's way more to the kingdom of God than meets the eye. It is not a mental ascent. It's a hard issue. When you start, and it's a pleasure, I'm happy to do it. Why? Because I want to be like Jesus when he said and made that declaration. I think Linda said that as well. She said, you know, the enemy is coming to get me, but he's got nothing on me. You and I need to be like that. You know, it's a difficult, challenging week right now, but the enemy's not going to have anything on me. I'm going to repent. Not of a mental ascent, but God will quicken you. You'll, you'll have a thought of something that happened, whatever. And you just quickly turn and you just say, God, I'm sorry, that is not proper for a child of God. Thank you for revealing that to me so that I can take what's rightfully mine. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, when, when we know who we are in Christ... You don't want to be anybody else. Because you are created so unique. This is our life. This is a continual treasure hunt. It is God's privilege to reveal to you how amazing you are. If there is not life in the voice, it's not the voice of God. I got so many people that, oh, the Holy Spirit told me I'm to pull away and this and that and whatever. It's like, that's not the Holy Spirit. He doesn't rip fruit out of a vine. If the Holy Spirit's really speaking to somebody, their fruit is ripe. And it just falls into the hand and it might be time to shift things, whatever, but it's always, there's grace there. There's power there. There's truth there. There's revelation there. It's not a sad look and, oh, the Lord told me I can't do this. I can't. It's like, you're not hearing the Lord then. You're hearing a counterfeit voice, likely from a mental ascent, likely because there's offense or hurt from days gone by from some other thing that might be 20 years old, 30 years, 50 years old. Let's go a little deeper. Don't turn there, but it, it just as a, as a little more um, ammunition, it says in Matthew 13, 11, Jesus is ministering and he's talking in parables. And in verse 11, his disciples are saying, you know, why are you talking all these parables to the people? And Jesus answered and said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it has not been given. You are a mystery to your neighbors. But it shouldn't be a bad mystery. It should be a good mystery. A mystery in the way that they can solve it when they come to your home, they're invited in, and they realize that you're not after their money. You're not after, it's not some cult thing. You're literally, there's a, there's a genuine concern there for their mental, physical, spiritual well-being. You want to bless them and see them prosper and be in health even as their soul prospers. But what are we dealing with? Let's zip way over to Revelation chapter 3. You know, these messages that were given to the churches when John the Revelator was, was banished to the island, and as jo Linda said last week, they couldn't kill him. And the last church that he addresses is the Laodicean church. And the La La Laodicean people... At that time, they, there was a lot of wealth there. 
I'm just going to get some of my notes here. And it says, if we go to verse 17, Revelation 3, because you say, I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous, and here it is again, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what, what door? Remember, this is not a mental ascent. Because God's knocking right now at your, your heart. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him. He with me to him who overcomes. I will grant to sit with me on my throne. This is kingdom. This is governmental stuff. The enemy works so hard at beating you down because the enemy knows that once you grab your authority, you know Luke 10, 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes. The whole teaching on that. <laughs> and scorpions, and nothing by any means will harm you. And then it says, nevertheless, don't rejoice in that. That's just a byproduct. Rejoice in the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. It's a book of life, not death. So when you let go to God, you're letting, that's why, I, like I said, it's a weird analogy, but I just got this picture of this person struggling in the ocean. And I'm thinking, well, in the ocean of God's goodness, you don't struggle. You let go. For years, I would have encounters with God and I would stop myself because I was afraid. I would literally feel just feelings that I won't share maybe here, but like it scared me and I, I mentally put the brakes on. Mentally. That's why I love grannies and I love little kids. For some reason, it's the grannies and it's the little kids. They just go for it. I think it's the grannies because they've lived enough life that they just don't give a rip anymore. They're just like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I don't care what comes out of my mouth. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to let it rip right now. If there's joy in the room, I need some joy. If there's this in the room, I'm just going to take it. And little kids, they're just like, woo, I'll take it. I'll woo, the glory of God. Wah! So that means the men and the rest of us there, we don't, I, we don't realize how much pride we have. You are. Does that mean we throw wisdom out the door? Not at all. Wisdom is a person. We partner with wisdom. The creation of the world, God was working with wisdom. Again, we have to start to, we have to, start to enlarge the sphere of our, of our understanding that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. If there's something that doesn't sit right with you, with somebody... You've got to discern, is it because there's something in me that's not good or is there something in them that's not good? It's not a mental ascent. Verse 18, he says, I counsel you, this is Revelation 3, 
Buy from me gold that has been heated. This is the amplified version that has been heated red hot and refined by fire so that you may be truly rich and white clothes representing righteousness to clothe yourself. So the shame of your nakedness will not be seen and healing salve put on your eyes so that they not so that they may see. And I, I know in Laodicea, they were known for their clothing. They were known for their eye salve back in biblical days because they would actually create some eye salve that would heal the eyes. So there was, there's some of that talk there that was specific for the Laodicean church. But the problem that, that the Lord had with the Laodicean church was they were lukewarm. We can't have a lukewarm church. You know, a church that's run by man will fail. And we're not here to gather for, for self-help messages or for good ideas or, or strategies how to build net wealth if we partner together. Some of those things may come as a result of the kingdom, but we gather here on earth as it is in heaven. We gather here together in this big celebration service to connect with his presence. If his presence is not coming to the church, then I don't want to go. It's boring to me. I don't need another history lesson. I don't need another Greek lesson or Hebrew lesson. I'm not opposed to Greek, Hebrew. I'm not opposed to history. As long as the result is his presence. Because in his presence is fullness of joy. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and the Holy Ghost. Joy. I wrote down those three things, what, what they mean, righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness takes care of the sin issue. Peace takes care of the tormenting issue. And joy is the healing issue. Laughter is like medicine for the soul. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Why is it so often that that is chopped off? I'll tell you why. Because you cannot control the Holy Spirit. You can't control him. He will not be controlled. You think you had a rebellious teenager? You think you had a rebellious horse? You think you had a stubborn dog or cat or neighbor? The Holy Ghost cannot be tamed. He can't be tamed. He can't be tamed. But you let go and you let the Holy Ghost and he may send you to the dirtiest river to bathe seven times because he's the Holy Ghost. And he's doing that on purpose, not because the river's going to make you clean. It's the pride that is going down on the way to the river and it is the commanded blessing that comes at the word of the Lord. That's why you can't limit God. Well, you can. You can limit God. But you can't limit God because he's going to do it. Whether you're a part of it or not, he is going to do it. He is going to build his church. He is going to release his glory. He is going to have revival continually in the hearts of those who love him. And it's right now. It's right now. This isn't a new revelation. It's just that people's eyes were getting so far advanced in our technology that people are coming to the place It's like, I might be able to talk to somebody on the other side of the world. I might be able to put my body, you know, you know, fly off in a wingsuit down a mountain to get an adrenaline rush. But why can't I just live with the opposite sex and have a, have a, a peaceful night and, and, and not have to be so busy? Or why have I worked for so hard to, to get to the pinnacle of my career and I'm empty? Why have I broken every record and every challenge and everything that's been put? Why have I been number one my whole life? but I, I cry myself to sleep at night because I feel so empty. It's because you're a three-part being, your body, soul, and spirit. And if you come and you buy gold, you buy the most precious thing that's been refined in the fire. That kills the pride. You're willing, you know, I asked Linda this week and it, it touched me what she said. I said, why do you love me? aside from my good looks and talents and abilities. but I, That's what I was thinking. But she said, your willingness to do whatever God asks you to do. Uh, 
I went, wow. Because I remember when I was your age. Because that's when Linda and I met. And I grew up in the church. And I thought the church was so boring. Until I started to encounter the Holy Spirit. And when I started to repent, my eyes were opened. That's why Paul prays for the Ephesians. He prays that I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. Like church is not about coming here every week and sitting and enduring a message. No, it's, in, it's, it's ascending and descending. Like this morning, we've already, there's angels in this room right now. There's things, I love what Janet Mills says. She says, doubt and you'll miss out. Doubt and you'll miss out. Go ahead, doubt. It's a faith thing. You grab it and you will vibrate with those that are in faith. If you're in faith, you will be repelled. God will repel you if you are not in faith. I read, how many scriptures did I read? Five, six, seven? It is all about laying this down and picking his kingdom up. And when you do, when I do, suddenly the things of this world, they don't matter that much anymore. They don't really matter. I want to finish up. If you just turn the page to Revelation chapter 4. After these things, I looked. Where is he looking? He's in the spirit. You know, I remember hearing Bobby Connor years ago talk about when you get in the spirit, and some of you will know what I mean. Some of you won't. But when you get in the spirit, you have the ability to look. You have the ability to look around. And he's in John the Revelator here in Revelation chapter four, he says, after these things, I looked after the message came and there was a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones, I saw 24 elders clothed in white robes. They had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were the four living creatures full of eyes. Tell me, can you explain this? It's too marvelous. And if you want to fight the Bible, you're going to fight the number one selling book of all time that has survived. Every war has been written on three different continents, has had authors. Like, it's the most disputed book in the world, bar none. Where did this come from? What is it talking about? It's talking about God wanting to connect with his people. And he withholds things from his children. But it's his delight to reveal them when we seek him first. It's his delight to give you the things of the kingdom. It's his delight for you to swim in the sea of the crystal sea. But your natural mind cannot go there. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it is not a mental ascent. It is a change of mindset, but it, it can only come through a change of heart. That can only come through a dunamis encounter with the grace of God. That can only can come when our eyes become enlightened and we actually see that we're naked. Because there's many people today, they don't see that they're naked. That's what he was saying to the Laodicean church. He's saying, 
You're wretched and blind. What are you, what are you talking about, man? I'm wretched and blind. Look at, look at this house, man. Look around. Look at my Rolex watch. Look at the rings on my finger, man. Look at my garage. I got six car garage. Ferrari. I got this. And it's like, yeah, you're blind. You're blind. You don't understand that he's God. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. Don't fall in the hands of God. Fall into the hands of God. Fall on the rock and be broken. Lest it fall on you and grind you to powder. So any trial that you're going through right now, any difficulty that you're going through right now, your job is to repent. What? Yeah. Change your mind. God, you've allowed this. What is it in me that you've allowed this? Because you're, you're in heaven. I'm on earth. I want to operate out of heaven. So why are you, what is in me that needs to change to see this differently? Okay. Do you see how the onus shifts? No, sister, no, no, if they would just, it's like, oh, off oh, that church, that pastor, if he would just give me the microphone, I'd get Bracebridge saved. Really? We don't need a good program. We need the presence of God. And out of the presence of God, the program will come. But we need the presence of God. We have to operate out of the third heaven. We have to. History's proved with hundreds and hundreds of years, all kinds. I've heard so many people, this is, the new, this is the new thing for the church. It's not new. It's old, and it's called pride. Stop thinking that you're better than God. He's, he knows what he's doing. He loves you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. for our assignment this week where Paul was declaring oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified God I thank you that our, our assignment this week is to repent And we don't even have the right to be like self-pity. Oh, I'm so bad. <laughs> no, we literally, God, I thank you that you grant us a spirit of repentance in this church. There's a spirit of repentance, Lord, where we start to recognize where we've been living in a low level of living. We've been self-sabotaging. We've been allowing the things of this world, the glitter and the glitz and the, and the promises that are empty to fool us, to dupe us. We don't need a new prime minister or a new president. Canada needs a church that recognizes that there's a supreme ruler that sits on a throne and that we cohabit with him in heavenly places. So God, I thank you for a spirit of repentance over this house. That the enemy has nothing in us. I pray that the eyes of our understanding would may be enlightened, that we may know what the hope of our calling is. Yes, this is good. That's good. It's good to trade and do business and do well. But God, there's so much more that you want to entrust to your church. I speak your blessing over this house today. And I thank you, God, that you are building your church on the understanding that Jesus is Lord of all. In Jesus' name, amen.